But let's watch this video, and we'll talk in a second. I didn't know it was going to start right away. Let's see what this game's got. Reminds me of uh, Diablo's intro movies. this guy got going on Oh shit. Oh man, he's like, motherfucker, open that eye. <laughs> oh, wow. Jeez, I'm gonna have nightmares about that for sure. Hello, everybody, it's Gray J Gamer here, and I am back with a brand new series for the channel. I am super pumped to get into this game. I was waiting and debating to see if I should do it because I have my Diablo series going on. I have my Divinity Original Sins 2 series going on. But the lure and temptation of this game just kept pulling and pulling at me. So I finally broke down today and we are going to start our new series. And let's get into it. Here we go. Look at this. This is a blind playthrough. I haven't watched anything about this game. Oh, we love it. Love the music. Look at the scenery. It looks awesome. I cannot wait to get into this game. So for those of you that are new to the channel or don't know that much about me, I'm a pretty new streamer. I just started about four months ago. Not a streamer, YouTuber, sorry. Started about three or four months ago. And I'm a dad. I have a, a series, Diablo series on here that I play with my wife. Um, it was the second series I started. Originally, I started playing Divinity Original Sins 2. Um, this game is made by Larian Studios as well as Divinity Original Sins 2. If you haven't played Divinity Original Sins 2, check it out. Awesome game. Um, made by the same studios. This is Baldur's Gate 3. I am so excited. Let's go ahead and get into the game. And I'll continue talking a little bit about myself. Introduce you guys to me. But let's go ahead. I am so ready. So pumped. I've been trying to keep as much information out of my head as possible. You know, I've seen a couple things here and there. But I am trying to get a completely blind playthrough of this. I've never played a Baldur's Gate game, but I know there's a lot of hype around this one. And I'm sure it's much deserved. So let's go ahead. New game. Here we go. So we got a couple different modes here. Honor. One single save so file. Then we have Tactician. A tough campaign emphasizing strategic combat. Balance, a balanced adventure full of challenging choices and explore a narrative experience placing story before combat and there's also a custom custom difficulty here so you can kind of change pretty much anything you want no saving throws multi-classing on or off trader price modifier oh so you can make it easier to get more money okay whole bunch of different things oh yeah they have a lot of choices that's pretty cool you can customize the game we're not going to do honor that's too crazy for me um, I am a fairly casual gamer. Um, 
I used to game pretty hard when I was about a high schooler up until my first year of college, second year of college. Who are we? Well, let's see who we are. So that was an awesome opening scene. Definitely got some Diablo 4 vibes off that. Um, if you played Divinity, their last game, uh, it was more of like a cartoon style. It wasn't really like a video for their uh, cutscenes and stuff. But that was really, really cool. I mean, that was like a movie, honestly, the detail. And just look at the detail in these characters. I mean, look, look at the hair. You can see the individual strands of hair. Just the face has pores. It's just amazing what this game looks like. And this is on the PS5. Um, I have heard the PS5 is, does put out some pretty good graphics for this game. Um, I know with the computers, they are struggling, especially I don't have thousands of dollars to put into a computer or even a thousand dollars to throw into a computer. So one day, hopefully, but not right now. Okay, so getting back to what I was saying earlier. So I'm Gray J. I started doing this about three months ago. I used to game when I was in high school and a little bit in college. And then life got in the way, you know, doing different things, hanging out, partying, got away from the gaming. Then I had two kids, definitely couldn't game anymore. But now my kids are getting a little older. They're almost at the age where they could start playing video games. Not quite there yet. But I decided, you know what? Let's get into something that I used to love, get back into a hobby that I fell in love with as a kid. And I'm loving it. Um, it's so much fun. And also, I am the type of person that typically I will play something for an hour and I'll never come back to it. I have, you know, I'll have tons of games. I'll have 10, 15 games. I'll play one, each of them for an hour and I never go back to them. So when I started this channel, it really pushed me to continue playing. And I enjoy it. I, I just like to pick games where you can pick a lot of choices, which this is one of those types of games where you get to make a lot of choices. But if I make a choice I don't like, I restart and I restart and I restart. So that's not going to happen. But that's just a little bit about my background with gaming. So now we get to look at all of these characters. So these are origin characters, much like in Divinity Original Sins 2. They have origin characters that you can play as that have their own backstories and their own uh, little history with the world. So different people they come in contact with will know them. They'll have different conversations with uh, different characters in the world. So these are those people. So you can play as an origin character or you can choose a custom character. We are going to do a custom character. Uh, maybe on a second playthrough we'll play as an origin character. But the great thing about Divinity is you get to bring along three of these people with you in your campaign, which I have read a little bit that apparently in this game it's a little different and you kind of go with everyone in the party um, as you move through the story. Um, whereas Divinity, you're kind of locked in once you pick your three companions. As far as I know so far we're not of my playthrough on Divinity. Go ahead and watch that. GrayJGamer at YouTube.com. Subscribe, like, Thank you guys. But first, we're going to go ahead and go through everyone's introduction, just like Divinity. I'm going to say that a lot, just like in Divinity. Um, they have little introductions for the characters, and they're really well done. It gives you a backstory of the characters, and it's also a good way for me to get introduced to this, these characters, because like I said, I have not played this game, and I have not watched too many videos about it. Really, I've only read a couple things online. So let's go ahead and start with the Astarian. I'm going to say his name is. Here we go. Darling, don't be shy. I promise not to bite until we've been formally introduced. My name's Astarian, and I've spent a century stalking the night, hunting for pretty morsels just like you. A man called Cazador made me what I am, kept me like a pet, forced me to do his bidding. No more. The Tapel's influence broke his dominance over me, and now I can finally pursue the one thing I've hungered for these long, dark years. Revenge. 
I'm going back to Baldur's Gate to track Cazador down in his lair. I'll be the last thing the bastard ever sees. <laughs> Okay, so that was a Starion. He seems pretty cool. Definitely a shady past. Um, let me guys know in the comments. I'm the type of person, usually when I watch a sh uh, YouTuber or watch a gaming video, I kind of like to just listen to the videos without too many comments. So that's what I'm kind of doing for my um, YouTube. But let me know if you guys like a little um, sprinkling in of comments or different things. You know, I want to try to make this as much for you guys as, as for me. So let me know in the comments about that. So we have, okay, I'm going to have to really guess on this one. Love the armor. She looks really cool. Uh, I'm going to say Lazelle. Okay, let's go ahead and play her introduction. Since I was born in the cold reaches of wild space, I have known but one purpose. To wield a silver sword and ride a red dragon in service of my regent, the Githyanki Queen Vlakith. My first step on this path is to slay a Mind Flayer and bring its head to my queen. There is no flesh I will not carve, and no barrier I will not shatter to see it done. I am the one who sunders. I am the Undying Queen's most unshakable warrior. I am Lazelle of Kalir. Okay, she is really cool. I think that's somebody that we're going to want to have on our side because she seemed like she really hates the Mind Flayers. So we're going to have to keep her in mind. Plus, she's really cool. I've never seen a... She's like kind of like an orc, a half-orc kind of looking person. You know, a little bit of elf, a little bit of goblin, but it sounds like she's from outer space, so she must be an alien. Interesting. Like I said, I have no information, no background information about Boulder's Gate 3. I will be learning about it as we go through. If there's something I don't know about, um, I'll look into it. Like the Githyanki, we're going to look and try to I'll read about them a little bit, figure out what they're all about. And I'm sure we'll learn, too, as we play through the game. Here we have Gale. He is a human wizard. Oh, let's go back and look. So, Astarian is a half high elf, not a half elf. He would not like that, probably. High elf rogue. Lazelle is a Githyanki fighter. And then we have Gale, a wizard, a human wizard. All right, let's go ahead and watch Gale here. Well met, stranger. You find yourself in the presence of the renowned wizarding prodigy, Gale of Waterdeep. Please, no need to be intimidated. My virtuosic talents once caught the eye of the goddess of magic herself, Mistra, who named me her chosen and her lover. Thanks to a slight miscalculation on my part, that relationship eventually soured, as did the greatest of my powers. Now I'm merely a humble wizard on the road to redemption. Unless I can find the path to something greater. Okay, Gail, you seem interesting as well. Um, you know, we all can uh, face those troubles of a star-crossed lover gone wrong. You know, that can doesn't turn out well sometimes, so we feel for you, Gail. All right, now we have Shadow Heart, High Half Elf, and she is a cleric. And it looks like Shar, I don't know what that means. Maybe her religion. Um, yep, oh, yep. Secrets of her fellow Shar worshipers. I'm gonna guess that's called Shar, Shar, yeah. All right, let's go ahead, get into Shadow Heart here. We like her, she looks pretty nice. My name is Shadowheart, loyal servant of Shah, goddess of darkness and loss. There is little more I can tell you than that. My lady Shah tasked me with a mission of such secrecy 
that I surrendered great swathes of my memory in order to safeguard the knowledge of it. All I know is that I must bring the artifact I hold to Baldur's Gate, and that nothing can stand in my way. My goddess is watching. Kind of like, sounded like she said Shar, Shar, but she didn't put the R on it. It was like Shah, Shah, yeah. Okay, that was Shadowheart. Now we have Wael, or Will? I'm going to guess, we'll guess Will. He is a human warlock, so let's go ahead and play his introduction. Seven years ago, I was exiled from Baldur's Gate, the city I call home. My name is Will, but the people of the Sword Coast call me the Blade of Frontiers, champion of the meek, defender of the innocent. The truth isn't quite so simple, but they're right about one thing. I hunt monsters, and I always catch my prey. My latest target is a devil, and I'm right on her tail. Once I'm through with her, she'll never escape the fires of the first hell. Okay, that was Will. He's pretty cool. He's a warlock, and he has a, like a, what is that? A, what kind of sword is that called? Like a scimitar? Something like that? No, no, it's like one of those, uh, I don't know, I can't remember. It's like a fencing type sword though, a cutlass, that's what it is. Yeah, it's kind of like a pirate sword. All right, Carlock. Ooh, we like her. Pretty cool, she has a broken horn here. She looks like a demon, kind of. Tiefling, Zariel Tiefling. Okay, we'll have to look up what a Tiefling is. I've never heard of a Tiefling in my video game travels before. So we'll look into that, and we'll get some history on that. I'll learn a little bit about that. And she is a barbarian. Let's go ahead and play her introduction. Here we go. Carlock, tell us what, all about yourself. Ten years ago, I was sold to the Archdevil Zariel. She put a hellfire engine in my chest and made me her prize soldier. But I've escaped now. Thank you, Mind Flayers. And I've got a few scores to settle. If this engine doesn't burn me to ash first, I'll need people I can trust. An infernal mechanic and a serious amount of luck. But you know what? I'm not worried. After ten years in the hells, I can take on anything. I've got my chance at freedom, and believe me, I'm going home. Okay, we, she's pretty cool too. There's a lot of good choices that I'm already like, I don't know who I want to pick as our companions. But that was Carlock, Carlack. Can't even say her name right. Let's go. This looks like the last one, the Dark Urge. He's a dragonborn, a sorcerer. Oh, pretty cool. Got some Skyrim vibes over here. Definitely a lot different than the uh, lizards in Divinity. All right, let's go ahead, play his introduction. Oh, it says your appearance in class can be fully customized. So this one is not strictly, doesn't have to be... Um, your appearance. I wonder if that means you don't have to be a dragonborn. I don't know. You can be whatever you want. So this one's just about the name, the Dark Urge. I guess that's his name, or he doesn't know his name. You remember nothing but a path paved with blood. Okay, and I did read a little bit about the Dark Urge. Apparently, this isn't something you want to play for your first playthrough for some reason, but a lot of people on Reddit said it didn't really matter, and they don't know why the developer said that. Um, apparently, it's very... Uh, it's more into the lore of the game, I guess, or like, I don't know. It's just a different part of the game, so it's a good thing to play on a second playthrough because you get a lot of different things, apparently. Something like that. But let's go ahead and play The Dark Urge. My rancid blood whispers to me, kill, kill, and kill again. 
my ruined body yearns to reap death in this world. And when this foul urge calls, it possesses my whole being. Injured, beyond repair. I know nothing besides this. I must resist the dark urge, lest it consume my mind. I must discover who I was and what happened to me before my twitching knife hand writes a tragedy in blood. So he seems like he's like a serial killer, I'm going to guess. I mean, I would not want to walk up against him. The red, he looks like he's blood-stained. Or he kind of looks like, you know, the lizards, and they get that little red throat when they're like the males, when they're trying to show off. Looks like he has a little bit of that going on. But okay, that is all of the characters there. Now we are going to make our character. So let's get into it. We're going to go to custom. Okay, we got a couple different body types. Oh, she looks kind of like Barney. She looks friendly or like, uh, what's that movie? Oh man, trying to remember. Never Ending Story. The dragon from Never Ending Story. That looks like Looks like him. Uh, okay, we have two body types. Oh, maybe it's because we're a uh, dragonborn. Let's turn into a non-human, or not, uh, to a human type person here. All right, there we go. Um, let's say, I say go big or go home, so we'll go ahead and do that. That looks good to me. Okay, now we're going to do race. So we have elf, high elf. Okay, let's look at some of the things they have. So Elf, they have Elven Weapon Training. You have Proficiency with the Longsword, Short Sword, Short Bow, and Longbow. Dark Vision, can see in the dark up to 40 feet. And Fate, Ancestry, you have advantage on saving throws against being charmed and magic. Can't be put to sleep. That's pretty cool. Tiefling, descended from Devils of the Nine Hells, Tieflings face constant suspicious suspicion in Run. Thankfully, their arcane abilities make them natural warriors. So they have dark vision, can see up to 40 feet, um, and hellish resistance. You have resistance to fire damage, taking only half damage from it. That makes sense. Okay, so they come from hell, so nine, one of the nine hells. Don't want to go to there. Drow, um, they look kind of like dark elves. Never, I don't really know anything about drow. So we got drow and tiefling as my homework assignments. I'll mark that down. Driven to the underdark. Most drow have adopt, adopted a ruthless pragmatism. While the Luth sworn to lighten the goddess, goddess's evil tenants, the Solindrine reject her attempt to overthrow the leader of the Elven Pantheon. All right, and we have Drow weapon training, proficiency with rapier. Oh, maybe that's what that was, a rapier. Short sword in hand, crossbow. Superior dark vision, they can see up to 80 feet, so that's double what the other one was. So instead of 40, they got 80. Fae Ancestry, you are, have an advantage on saving throws, must be uh, against being charmed. So they are like related to elves. Okay, and let's see, we have humans. I'm very familiar with humans. Um, typically, I'm kind of boring in the games like these. I do typically pick a human. I'm going to try not to this time, but if I do pick a human this time, I promise I'll try not to pick a human next time. Um, if we have a second playthrough, I know these games can be pretty long. I think this is a little shorter than Divinity, though. Um, but let's see, we got Civil Militia. You have weapon proficiency with spears, pikes, halberds, and gleaves, and armor proficient with light armor and shields. Human versatility, select an additional skill to be proficient in. Your carrying capacity is increased by a quarter. Spear proficiency. So they have all the different weapon proficiencies. Humans are really good at killing. I, I get it. All right, Gith Yankee. Okay, they. I do like the Gith Yankees. They do look pretty cool. Definitely like it's like a cross between like a goblin. They're a cross between a couple different creatures. It seems like the spotted skin. All right, they have astral knowledge, gain proficiency in all skills of a chosen ability. With a ruthless ruthlessness born from mind flayer enslavement, Gith Yankee ride the astral sea atop red dragons. Oh, so can they, like, breathe in space? Is that what that's kind of saying? And I guess the dragons can't do that. That's really cool. Bringing their silver swords and psionic might to bear against any trace of illithid menace. Is that what the mind flayers are? Are they illithid? 
don't really know. We'll look that up too, add that to the list. All right, we have Mage Hand. Create an invisible spectral hand that can manipulate and interact with objects. Oops. Um, they're really good at martial arts and a couple bunch of different armors and stuff like that. And they have a base racial speed, can move 30 feet per turn. Okay. Dwarf. I am familiar with dwarves. I played a dwarf in World of Warcraft back in the day and also a druid. Um, what was it? The cows, I forget what they're called. The tauren. Yep, that was my main person, was a Torn. But I played a couple of the Wharves for the human side. The Alliance. Um, they have Dark Vision. Uh, Dwarven Resilience. You get, have advantage on saving throws against poison, and you have resistance to poison damage. And Dwarven Combat Training. Okay. There's a lot of different options here. Oh, we have a Half Elf, so I'm guessing you're Half Elf, Half Human. Curious, ambitious, and versatile half-elves are welcome everywhere, but struggle without a community to call their own. Oh yeah, I feel that, you know. The humans don't like you. It, it's always weird to me in these games. Why are humans and elves don't get along? Why do the humans hate the elves so much? They always want to kill them. It's so, I don't understand it. I don't know the, like, the lore or the history behind that. I mean, even though they're not real, obviously. But yeah, that's a pretty cool one. So they're kind of like... They get the best of both worlds here. They got Civil Militia, Dark Vision, and Fey Ancestry. Okay, cool. Halfling. Whoa, we got to zoom out for him. Okay, these are like, uh, what's that, Lord of the Rings? Uh, Frodo? Is that a halfling? No, hobbits. They're hobbits. So I'm guessing that's different than halflings. Small yet capable halflings prefer the comforts of home and hearth, but their natural luck and dexterity makes them fine adventurers. So what's the difference? And I'm not trying to be rude or like, I, I, I don't know anything, but I want, I'm going to look up this too, add that to the list. That's four things now. The difference between a halfling and a dwarf. We'll look at that. They have lucky and brave though. Okay. Gnome. Okay, I know about gnomes. World of Warcraft too. Um, yeah, the gnomes were people. I was going to think, no, that was the goblins I was thinking of. But yeah, gnomes, yeah. That, that's, I remember them from World of Warcraft. Gnome cunning. You have advantage on intelligence, wisdom, and charisma saving throws. Small, clever, and energetic. Gnomes use their long lives to explore fey, fey runes, brightest corners, and darkest steps. Okay, so they live a long time kind of like elves. Okay, cool. So they're kind of like the, you know, they're like the tinkers, the builders. Dragonborn. Okay, yes, Skyrim for sure vibes right here. Dragonborn, a proud race that values clan and skills above all else. Once enslaved by dragons. Okay. That's good. So dragons are intelligent, intelligent a lot, and I know, in a lot of, like, mythology. Um, and I know a lot of dragons in video games and stuff can talk, but I didn't know that they had slaves, Okay. They strive to be self-sufficient, not wanting to be beholden to anyone, not even the gods. Okay, wow. That I wouldn't mind playing a, a Dragonborn, for sure. I would not want to come up against him in a fight. I'm sure the intimidation is super high. I'm surprised you acquire the following. It's only one thing. They can run 30 feet. Pers and then last but not least, we have the half-orc, another unique option. I don't see um, orcs as even being typically a playable character. Creatures of intense emotion, half-orcs are more inclined to act than contemplate. Whether the rage burning in their bodies compels them to fight, or the love filling their hearts inspires acts of incredible kindness. Okay. So I'm guessing they're split between a human and an orc. I'm going to guess that's the uh, half part. Intimidation, yes, for sure. You would be intimidated by a, a orc, or e especially even a half orc. Um, they have dark vision, relentless endurance. If you reach zero hit points, you regain one hit point instead of becoming downed. Okay, interesting. So you get like a second shot. Uh, savage attacks when you land a critical hit with a melee weapon attack, you deal an extra dice of weapon damage. And that's another thing that brings up in this game that I do know that's different than Divinity is the dice roll. So pretty much everything in the game, it's based off D&D &D rules, which I have never played D&D, &D, but um, high rolls are good, low rolls are bad. So when you're making decisions, um, you know, do you want to uh, steal this guy's loot? Roll to, ro you get to roll to see if you can steal it, kind of thing like that. Uh, but it's pretty cool, so we'll see how that plays out. So those are the different characters. So now we're going to go ahead and pick our person. 
then we're going to pick our class and all that. But I will bring you guys back because you don't want to see me go through all these menus. I'm not super crazy about going super in-depth and creating the character, um, especially the skills and stuff. I'm probably going to leave them. But I will bring you guys back once I made my decision on what we're going to do. Okay, I finished making my character. So I did decide to choose a half-elf instead of a human, like I usually do. Kind of like a safe human type. So since he's a half-elf, we get the civil militia from the human side. Dark vision, fey ancestry. And for our sub-race, we chose a wood half-elf. So we get stealth and fleet of foot. We're a ranger. So we have true strike, gain advantage on your next attack roll, and find familiar. Summon a familiar, a face spirit that takes an animal form of your choosing. I figured since we're an elf, that would go good with the ranger skill, because that's a, the ranger ability. Then we are a beast tamer. You have cultivated a strong bond with animals. You can cast find familiar without expending a spell slot. Then for our favored enemy, we are a mage breaker. You have a history of building, spe uh, battling spellcasters. You gain proficiency in Arcana and can cast True Strike. So we do not like mages. We're anti-magic. And then we are the folk hero. You're a champion of the common people, challenging tyrants and monsters to protect the helpless. Saving innocence in imminent danger will make your legend grow. So I figured... Since we're a human half-elf, we're not accepted by anybody. So we want to win the love of the people. You know, our, our mom was an elf, our dad was a human. So we wanted to go out into the world and find people that loved us and cared about us as who we are. And it goes good with the animal uh, side with the survival and stuff. Since we are a wood elf, we're good at surviving in the woods. Um, the ability points, I didn't really change anything here. I left it as what it was set at for being a ranger. I used the recommended. And same thing with the uh, skills. So we have athletics, acrobatics, sleight of hand, stealth. We're really good at. And I do want to bump up um, the investigation skill. I want to be like a Sherlock Holmes type. And this is obviously our appearance. So I figured since we're half elf, we kind of would want to hide our ears so we have a little bit longer hair to cover our ears so people wouldn't know right off the bat that we're an elf. So we took that route. And then our name is Gray J. There's our stats on the side and all of our proficiencies. So we got all that. And then we go to our guardian, which of course I thought I was finished making my character and then I realized, oh, you have to make a guardian, okay? doesn't really explain what the guardian does or how they play in the game but this is who we chose so we did a little scar on her eye and with a backstory with her is that she was sliced with a magical blade across her eye which caused one of her eyes to change color so that is the backstory with her so that kind of goes in with our not liking spellcasters um background of how we're going to play our character we're going to kind of resist magical things we don't like magic maybe one of our parents was killed by a mage we don't know but with that we are done with our character creation we are done explaining it's time to get into the game but this is a pretty long episode so we'll see you on the next one gray j gamer out i hope you guys enjoyed it come in for the next one we're going to get started in this game it's going to be a lot of fun see you guys later